are on the last segment of data models. This is a set of videos describing how to use different tools to get your data models to populate. And so if this video doesn't quite make perfect sense, it's because you're jumping into the middle of a, diff of, of a set of videos. Please refer down below. We'll show you the uh, other videos that came before this. Uh, you can totally still use this for uh, how to alias fields and stuff like that. But just recognize that this is a this is part of a project that we've been doing to make data models and get the data to fit into the data model. We've described how we do our data models. We come into settings, data models, I grab network traffic, and we talked about how we restrain down the indexes using this little macro. We've talked about how we set these tags. We've done that in the previous two videos. And now we're going to talk about how to do fields. The thing is, you can have certain fields in your data, but if it doesn't exist here in the data model, it's not going to show up. And so you need to make sure that your fields from your data match the data model fields. We referenced earlier this uh, white this uh, documents page from Splunk. This is the data model. I pick network traffic. You can grab any data model you want, and it will tell you all of the fields, the field name, the data type, a description of that data type and recommended values. I, I highly recommend looking at this document. It saves a lot of effort. What does that field really mean? And so you can start to assign your stuff to match up to the thing, match them up correctly. Um, the other thing to show is that, as I said, you can you can change this data model, but if you do, you lose a lot of the reusability. The reason they call it the common information model is they want it to be common across everything. And so if you can avoid changing the data model, that's better. And so we typically change our data instead of the uh, the data model. And I'm going to I'm going to have to import some data to make this work because I don't do uh, have to alias my data. I I used to, I used to do exactly what I'm going to show you here, but I came across a product a little while ago and it's called Cribble. Cribble is an amazing product. I send my data there and with a nice GUI interface, I just change all my data and it comes into Splunk already SIM compliant. That's the term we use for, it meets all of the common information model names and terms. And so I don't even do, do what I'm going to show you here. I let Cribble take care of that for me. But for those who don't have Cribble, I will show how to do it in Splunk natively. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to import data. So I'm going to add some data. I, you don't need to do this because you'll have your own data. But I said, I don't have any data in here that isn't SIM compliant. Even my uh, lame event generator creates the data SIM compliant. So there's no reason that I, you have to do this. But there are data sources that are gonna, you're going to deal with that aren't SIM compliant. So I'm going to grab this little JSON file. This guy is not SIM compliant. He has a nice little JSON file, but he's not SIM compliant. We're going to put this in the lame training. I'm going to hit review. I'll grab the source type. I'm actually going to grab the, the, the yeah, we'll do that as well because I want to, I want to change, I don't want to actually apply a source type to an underscore JSON field. There could be other JSON stuff, and so it wouldn't make sense to actually use that. I'm going to do it based off source. You have a choice. You can alias based off source type, which then I would use underscore JSON, or the source, in which case I'd use the name of the file. Um, and so for my, for my training, I'm going to do it as source is this file here. We can see right off, we got a nice little set of data here, bytes in, bytes out, desk port, flow ID, ID or JH, ID response age, packets in, packets up. This is definitely network traffic data. Let's go look how it matches up to the SIM model. It's got a lot of the same fields. You got app, we've got bytes in, bytes out, things like that. But one of the first things that should stand out, they use the field destination IP, dest IP. I don't have a dest IP field. Source IP, I don't have one of those either. So I'm going to need to fix that. And the, one of the quickest ways I do this is I'm going to take grab head one and I'm going to go make a table and I'm going to grab all the objects from here, all these fields that I think are important that I want to keep. So I saw the app field. I definitely want the app field. I want the dest IP, the source IP. And I, I saw bytes in and bytes out. 
scroll all the way down so you can see those they're down here I am not I've got packets in packets out I've got a lot of things source port source desk port I'm not gonna put all those in because I want to keep this video relatively short but you would go through and grab every field from the desk from this uh, data model that you think is important and when you run this against your set of data you'll notice oh yep I got an app field we're good Oh, but I don't have a desk IP or a source IP, but I got bytes in and bytes out. So you can see what fields need to be manipulated. This is helpful because I can now know what I need to do to make this work. In the situation here, how do I get this destination field? We go to our toolkit of rename, and I'm going to just do ID dot response H as desk IP ID, and it's resp. as source IP. And so if we do something like this, we should now have all the fields fixed. Oh, cool. So now I know in order to make these fit, I just need to alias. Sometimes you might need to do some calculations, some lookups, things like that. This tells you what do I need to do to my original data source in order to make it fit into this data model. It's what I do. You can choose to do whatever you want, but th that's what works for me. So how do I make this work? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this tab. I'm going to come down settings. We've already talked about data models. I like the way they lay these out. I, I've said this in my intro video to this. We've talked about data models. We then set up event types, which gives us tags. And now we're working on fields. It's kind of a nice little flow right down the path. If we look at fields, if we need to calculate a field, we use that. If we need field extractions, we use that. But in this case, we just need field aliases. We need to change the name. Edit one or more aliases to field names. So that's what I'll do. Big thing to make sure, I am in the lame training app. My search is in the lame training app. If you do a search in the wrong field, and you don't have the right permissions, you'll think you didn't manage to accomplish anything. So I'm going to hit new field alias over here. I want it to stay in the lame app. I'm going to call it DM for data model, network traffic rename. And I mentioned you could use source type, which would be underscore JSON, or in my case, I'm going to go with the, the source because I don't want to have all everything underscore JSON. I could have anything that's JSON might have that source type. I don't want to apply things by accident to other stuff. So if I apply it to the source type, this, this file, it's far less likely to actually accidentally write over. So we put the original field ID dot response H, and that is your dest IP. And we're going to go ID dot org H, and that's going to be my source IP. Original field on the left, new name of the field on the right, we will save. We could overwrite the field values, which basically means these would disappear. I don't recommend it. Um, there's there's probably a use case, but Mike, mine I keep both fields. Nice thing with Cribble, I mentioned that I actually do use Cribble to overwrite it. I'll just make the field disappear and only have the original um, permissions. Let's make sure it's not private. Let's at least apply it to this app. Often you'll want to apply it globally. But for this purpose, I'm just going to leave it at the app level. Now, recognize the larger data set you have, the longer it's going to ta take for this. What happens is you make these changes. These aliases have to be performed at search time on the search head, which is why, again, I really like Cribble. I'd rather my data come in correctly so it doesn't have to do any sort of that performance. But and with the case of Splunk, when you make these aliases, you're going to be doing this at search time. And so you need to, it's got to upload this stuff into memory, change some of the, the, uh, the way it reads these files. So it can take a minute to propagate. And so don't worry if the minute you wrote these aliases, you head over to your search bar and you try to run it and these new fields aren't popping. It, it can take a few minutes. Sometimes it, it, it I can't count how many times I've sat there troubleshooting something just to find out if I just walked away and did something else and come back in a few minutes, my changes would have worked. Um, so just have some patience with it. That's my biggest uh, key I, could, I would have you take away from this. All right, so we now know we've got that filled. I'm going to go grab head one and let's go ahead and rerun this. Hopefully I have 
a source IP and a destination IP. And wouldn't you know it, as I said, we are still taking, it's taking its jolly good old time to repropagate through the system. So let's just grab this, I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna come into a search, open up a new search. Nope, didn't copy it, no big deal. Index, name training, source equals. And just validate while we're sitting here. One, am I in the right app? And see, there's your first gotcha. I set it available to the app, and it is, I am not in that app. So this is a good lesson learned. Don't make sure you've got the right permissions. If I come over to this other page here, which is actually in the right app, and I'm going to remove this content, now we'll have a dest IP and a source IP. So just recognize that those permissions really are important. They'll catch you. They'll get you. Uh, have enough patience to uh, let it propagate through the system, and two, make sure you have the right permissions to see those aliases. And so if I go and put this information back. I can now remove these renames and my data is coming in. So now I have I am now ready to start doing some pivoting around inside this uh, network traffic data model. I've got it. I'm I've met the indexes, I've got the tags and I've got my data so it's sim compliant and now we can start using some we can start actually using the data model to start searching for stuff. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, I would love it if you could subscribe to the channel. Every bit helps. Um, I hope this helps you on your journey from becoming a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.